63 inches in diameter. Gene Bosler here, Cat Spring, Texas. This beautiful tree here. That, as I just showed, 63 inches in diameter. Why? in the course of pruning this beautiful and massive specimen would you drive up to it tearing up the surface roots would you scar up the buttress roots and basically chew this tree to bits there's another wound from a big piece of dead wood being dropped down and gashing the tree. Now, at the time this tree was pruned, which I'm guessing is in the last couple of months, they, they weren't aware exactly that there was oak wilt only about eight or nine hundred feet off in that direction. The uh, symptomatic trees are not exactly visible from here. So, but they, I mean, we knew that there was oak wilt in Cat Spring. And, and yeah, I, I guess the case can be made to prune the dead wood out of a tree like this, but to drive under it, that's what my technicians are here doing, using the air spade to, um, to decompact the soil in the area. But you can see that this is quite a formidable specimen. I mean, this is a this is no joke. So yeah, I might have, I might have attempted, uh, if I'd been asked, you know, to, to dissuade the property owner from engaging in a pruning operation, even if it was the mere removal of dead wood, simply knowing that there's, you know, oak wilt in, the, in these here parts, and so the locals that were used should have known that, you know, these trees, these cuts should be painted. Um, known oak wilt, Cat Spring, Texas, Austin County. Um, whereas my crews are not in the habit of painting wounds because oak wilt isn't predominant in the part of uh, greater Houston metropolitan area where, where we work. We do paint our wounds in Katy, Texas, where oak wilt, uh, you know, confirmed oak wilt in March 2009 that, that I discovered in, um, in um, Nottingham Forest Subdivision. The, I guess the point is that even when you're removing dead wood, you're scarring up the callus wood, making open wounds and, and uh, inviting infection on the part of this tree. And this is, I think it's the biggest tree on the property, although there's a 62 inch tree just on the uh, wrong side of the property line belonging to the neighbor. There's a 57 inch tree on this property. And I counted another one up in the high, uh, found another one up in the high 50s too, I believe. So these are some real formidable trees. And uh, my point is, don't drive under these trees. Avail yourself of the shade. And, you know, we're, we parked, you know, fairly close to them. Probably closer than we should, knowing that the root, root system of a massive specimen like this extends two to three times beyond the drip line. But, um to drive under it in order to prune it, to drop big chunks out of it, ga leaving big gashes on the, on the lower scaffold branches, the buttress roots, the trunk, the surface roots, uh, just, just leaves a tree like this vulnerable. Even if you, you, know, you don't happen to know that oak wilt is a thousand feet away. Um, I, I, I consult something other than, you know, the local tree guy. Uh, before engaging in an operation like this. That applies to anywhere, not just Cat Spring. Um, so as it happens, there is Oak Wilt about 900 to 1,000 feet away. Texas Forest Service was out here on Monday. Today is Thursday, June, uh, I think it's 17th, 2010. And uh, we're going to start conducting our Oak Wilt treatments on four trees out there uh, by the property line that are uh, in close proximity to the leading edge of the oak wilt. 
So in a later posting, we'll take a look at that. We actually looked at it last week, or the week before. Right now, we're we're decompacting the soil. We're gonna we're gonna do some soil amendments. Uh, probably put down some sulfur. Maybe a little bit of of, of uh, boost natural, and uh, put down a uh, a layer of mulch here. Probably gonna go 14 to 18 radial feet out on this tree. Love to do the whole drip line, but uh, as you know, as you increase uh, the radius, you increase the surface area, you increase the amount of labor and your cost involved, the amount of material. So the root invigoration procedure with the air spade that we're conducting right now, it's basically focusing on the part that was driven, compacted, damaged. We're going to do some bark tracing and paint the wounds, uh, try to clean up some of these wounds a little bit, and uh, just kind of, I'd love to erect a fence around the drip line of this tree and say, okay, Mr. Homeowner, you and you alone get to walk under this thing and, and picnic under it, but no other traffic. You know, you, you buy a property with a tree like this, you expect to be able to enjoy it, climb in it, picnic under it, camp under it, but uh, certainly not drive under it, certainly not tear up the roots. Beautiful tree. Okay. Gene Bosler, Cat Spring, Texas, signing out.